First cab off the rank is Slipknot with Iowa, 14 tracks, 66 minutes. The second studio of the American Heavy Metal Band released August 2001 via Roadrunner Records, produced by the band and Ross Robinson. Recorded at Sound City Studios and Sound Image in California. Two singles were released in Left Behind and My Plague, both of which received Grammy nominations. <coughs> this album did extremely well, picking at number three in the US, number one in the UK, number two here in Australia, along with a spate of top 20 spots across the world, eventually going platinum in the US, UK and Canada, as well as gold in Australia, Belgium, Germany and Japan. This album is considered the band's darkest and heaviest album. It's also their longest one with their longest track being the title track. Mick. Not normally a, a fan of those little bits and pieces, the little, you know, noisy shit, but I actually think that this one, 515, um, is actually perfect to lean into people eating okay. shit. Yep. Um, it just really sets a good mood and, yeah, it's just... It's Christmassy. <laughs> it is 100% Christmas orientated, for sure. Um, straight into people equal shit, I mean, that is so true, isn't it? I mean, you know, when you look at a lot of things that piss us off and we're people and Wish we you. seem to piss each other off all the time and that's just... Perfect song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's even pissed it off. Yeah. <laughs> You're off to the start. It he sounds like Corey. You see, I can hear it's people. It's just the song. Relax. See, That's not to be offensive. He didn't say dogs equal shit. He said people yeah. equal shit. Hey. Yeah. Calm down. It's okay. Stop. Uh, the production is flawless. I thought it was just the band is just sounding really good here. You know, um, the track order is relentless. It just it starts mm. and it just does not leave you. Um, I think it's probably Corey's best vocal performance. I think in both the throat in and clean. Maybe. I just think it's very aggressive and, and even some of the tones that he's using on the clean are, are, are quite good. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard the anniversary release with the concert attached. No, um, I haven't heard that one. Yeah, the band is in fine form. Yeah? Yeah, okay, it's cool. really good. Um, I know it, this is one of the albums where a lot of people you know, if you're a Slipknot fan, think it's a lesser album. Like, it, it doesn't get okay. the same sort of look as Subliminal Verses or, you know, stuff later on. But, um, yeah, no, I think this is some of their best work. Hmm. Um, I, I think it's, it's a fantastic album. Um, it's groovy as hell. Um, it has... The energy is just through the roof, yeah. you know, um, but it's still very tight. It's very... They know how to play. Mm. Know how to play this style very well. Um, I gave it a 10 out of 10. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, people equal shit, My Plague, Everything Ends, uh, The Heretic Anthem, Skin Ticket, uh, they're my standouts. Cool. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's actually underrated this album for what it wow. is and the time it came out. Cool. Oh. I've never heard a Slipknot album all the way through. This is the first one. Oh, I've, really? I've wow. heard songs here and there. <laughs> yeah, good start. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with that. It is a brutal listen, and I remember it really shook things up back in the day when it was released. It really changed the landscape of metal. Uh, it did tend to get slotted in with the whole new metal genre at the time, mm. which is probably why I overlooked it. Um, mm. That really wasn't my thing. Um, it was probably the not having guitar solos. I was a bit of a snob. Mm. But, it yeah. Was. <clears throat> <laughs> my horizons, let's just say that. Um, there is some impressive playing, and the vocals are fucking amazing, mm. as you've already mentioned. The song My Plague, what is with the drums on that track? For the most part, they're normal, but then it's like they added um, Lars's trash can. It's like this clunk. It's well, the percussion. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Got they are. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a baseball bat on a so key. So you got the drums in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've seen it live, but yeah, there's a guy that bangs all different shit and okay. all that kind of stuff. That, so, yeah. that clears that up because it was <laughs> kind of really stuck out. It was kind of annoying. Yeah, it was supposed to. Uh, it is a long... <laughs> you know, things stick out and they're annoying. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, is a, it is a long listen, especially since they're very similar themes throughout the whole thing. It's one, like one speed and then fast. Um, but yeah, I was surprised how much melody there was throughout the final thing, and the changes within the songs helped to keep it interesting. Love the harsh and clean vocals. Yeah. It, it, a lot of bands are really hit and miss with that type of stuff, and mm. this is handled perfectly. I got at a 10, people, people equal shit. My plague, everything ends gently, and new abortion were my standouts. Yeah, this is uh, for mine where Slipknot hit their peak, um, where they had the perfect mix between the ferocity of the first album and the melody that you started to see in the later albums. Uh, there really is that uh, onslaught of double bass drum and two note down tuned guitar riffs. Um, the production is flawless. As a band live at this point, this is when they were at their best, at their peak. Their most aggressive <coughs> stuff happened in this era and it's mm. fantastic. Uh, the, the standouts for mine are disaster pieces and people equal shit. Mm -mm. Uh, my only little criticism of this is listening to it back, you know, nearly 20 years after it was released I don't know how well it ages 
Mm. Like if yeah. I was yeah. if I was a fifteen year old getting into heavy metal and listening to this now, I'm not sure this would be my first choice pick. Mm. But there's no denying that it's um it's uh it's standpoint in, you know, the history of heavy mm. music and yeah, this is yeah. a fantastic album. I gave it a nine out of ten and it's a great album. Yeah, brutal album. I uh, loved it so much <clears throat> more metal than the new metal that was sort of. Like even even that first album did have a lot more of the new metal sort of mm. thing to it. With it, a lot of it was put, you know, put aside. Um, so this sort of became a real breakthrough for him into a sort of much wider audience. It's not hard mm. to see why. Um, there's all hallmarks of the metal albums that got me hooked in the eighties. Yeah, you know, it had the great riffs. It had the anger. It had the message. It was all there. Um, I really think this is kind of the rain in blood for the next generation, you know. It's this yeah. relentless, okay. yeah. thrashy album that doesn't stop. Good comparison. Um, Corey Taylor is amazing on this, but I actually think he's become a better singer since. Yeah. yeah you know, I his performance is still it's probably a lot more harsh and brutal on this, but I think it, it actually as a classic singer, he has gotten better since this album. Um, the real genius on this album for me, though, is Joey Jordanson. Yeah. It is one of my favourite drumming performances of all time, this wow. album. It is astounding. Um, a lot of old schoolers write off this band, but you shouldn't. Get this album, check it out, I think you'll like it. Is it different from 80s <coughs> thrash? Yes, but mm. it's so cool in its own way. I give it 9.5 out of 10. The highlights are disaster piece, people equal shit, everything ends, and the heretic anthem. <coughs> yeah, look, I didn't mind this album. Um, I haven't heard too much Slipknot, Slipknot in the past. I mean, I have heard this album when it first came out, but it's not, not, not a band I normally revisit too much. Mm. But I did, didn't mind this one at all. What it, did, it, what it did for me is it took a lot of the rap stuff off, away from the first album, yeah. which that kind of... That kind of graded on me. I'm not not a big fan of the rapping on that first album. Um, I know some people are not. For me, this is more uh, more focused. It's more creative. It's more heavier. Mm. At the same time, more melodic as well. So it was a big step in the right direction as far as I was concerned. Because that's re- that's really right up my alley. Um, the one thing I really did enjoy about it is that the two DJs that are in the band mm. they kind of took time off because you don't really see them on the here yeah. very much. And the percussionists, they're not, they're not just playing their own thing. It's, some, it's like they're playing, like you mentioned Joe Jordison before, mm. it's like they're playing in unison with him. It sounds yeah. like a proper, almost like percussive rhythm section band, mm. which is kind of missing off the first one. Yeah. It was just much much more streamlined, much more heavier, much more melodic, and Corey, Corey Taylor's vocals. I mean, this guy put in a hell of a performance on that. I see what you're saying in terms of him becoming a better singer, mm. especially stuff in Stone Sour. Sour. Yeah. Um, yeah, this guy's just got a ridiculously good voice and tone and everything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only only one track's really got that rapping on it. That's the I Am Hated, um, but I can, I can pass that one. People people equal shit, what a track. Um, <laughs> remember, yeah. the first time I saw these guys was Soundwave, and I wasn't <laughs> going to hang around to watch them very much. Um, I was on a, off, off on another stage, heard that song, ran over, go Slipknot, I'm, 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 sit that, sat there, watched this, w- listened to that song. What a stage show these guys put on as well. Yeah. Uh, phenomenal. Um, Disaster Piece is pretty good. That manages to keep the intensity and aggression of the first track, which I really liked. That was another standout for me. Um, my only criticism of the album is this. I could I could have used a little bit more variety in it. Mm. Um, I find mm. a lot of the songs kind of stick to the same kind of path, different from the first album. Mm. But the songs on this are kind of they they stick to the tried and true measure mm. for, for sort of thing. Which is, I mean, look, it's it's enjoyable, really good. <coughs> I, I enjoyed the album, um, but it kind of trails off a bit for me towards the end after track eight, which was the Left Behind. Um, if I wrote, wrote on here, if Sick, Wait and Bleed and Suffocate could be lifted off that first album and put onto this, and this would be a 10 out of 10 yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so, uh, stand up for me, People Equal Shit, Disaster Piece, The Heretic Anthem, Left Behind, and I gave it 7 overalls out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. It's going to be one of those, okay, cool. one of those days. Now, my history with this band is somewhat check it out. I enjoyed the first album. I went to the first tour. I went to the, t- the in-store signing at JB Hi-Fi in the fucking city. The whole fucking lot. Then I saw them live, and they sucked. <laughs> um, they were shit on their first tour. The the opening band was the best band on the night. If anyone remembers the Wolves, you know what I'm talking no, about. They, band. they smoked band. them. Good band. Um, this one is much more heavy, much more brutal than the first album, which has been covered off. Um... The dark and evil opening that you mentioned, that sets the time for it beautifully. And these guys would have gone really well with Soulfly at this time. Yeah. I think there's just that syncopated yeah. rhythm that they've got would go really well on a build of Soulfly. Heaps of blast beats and grailing, all the yeah. frantic guitar work to match. All that. Still got some new metal roots in there mm. from the previous album, but this is much more aggressive overall. The production's interesting. It's relatively stripped back, which allows Corey's vocals to shine, which is good on this record. Um, they cut through in just the right way. Nothing's really polished up. Uh, almost a bit of a garage feel about it at times which is good with that much going on you want to give it a bit of atmosphere and space good depth to it too though as well which is really cool 
surprisingly clear considering how busy this mm. music gets that's the part that impressed me um, you can hear everything the lyrics as well you can hear those you can make them out which is cool um, it's got smart use of compression doesn't run too hot the lyrics didn't do a lot for me on this but I guess that is a combination of one being the grumpier old man syndrome kind of thing it didn't hook me at the time because I was already off of them mm. by the time this had come out so my experience with them have made it harder to go back and get into it at this mm. point in time because I'm not that angry kid mm. anymore so yeah. it's like it, it doesn't have the same impact to me personally um, I like it where it's more about feel my wrath versus feel my pain and this falls more on the feel my pain side than the feel my wrath side and it, that just irks me I don't, it doesn't yeah. it's too self indulgent for me <laughs> you need to fucking play this one loud um, yeah. it had more impact though through headphones when you could really just mm focus in on this one which is interesting I'll lean more to the tracks that have more groove melody on this record um, they do that well but overall you can't fault the playing of anyone or the performances across the board they they smoked it on this one it's very tight very well written very well performed it's a full on listen doesn't let you up um, but there's more diversity in the second half of the album which is refreshing because the first half really punishes you and then they start to break it up with the second half which is good um, if this is your thing you're going to love this if it's not it's going to lose you pretty quick um, the final long track is a really interesting way to close mm. things out I thought that was really yeah. cool it's heavy yet musical uh, probably a little bit too much of the same thing for me which is I think the same thing that uh, you yeah. were saying that it didn't quite have enough diversity yeah. overall yeah. Yeah. Um, but this does make me a little more curious to go and check out some more of their other stuff than I had been before listening to it today. But I gave it a six and a half out of 10. Uh, Left Behind, The Shape, Everything Ends in Iowa. So I think my standouts are completely different to everyone else's, which is an interesting yeah. point of view. So who do you agree with? Let us know, give us your thoughts. If they're your standouts, you'll probably enjoy the, the next couple of albums <laughs> yeah. after this one. Yeah. Volume three is their best album, I reckon. Yeah. All hope is gone. I, I find that's more yeah, well rounded down the track. At the time, I've got this is too much slug stone sour. But I actually think as a complete piece of work, all hope is gone. Is yeah, it's a fantastic. great album. The songs are great on it, but the drums sound so snapped to grit on that, and it doesn't fucking need to. When you listen to the other ones, like Joey out. sounds so fucking organic on all the others, and you put on fucking all hope is gone. It yeah, sounds like he sounds fucking triggered, and, yeah, yeah, I don't like it. Really fucking noisy. About that. I love the album. I love the yeah. songs on it, but that. Yeah. See, I, just I, like, I love that drum sound. I think it suits what they're doing. It's, it's almost like it's too perfect. At that point in time, <laughs> they, were, they were like the pan. They were meeting Pantera's yeah. sort of thing, you know. Mm. Um, 